Hello, hello, everyone. Good evening. We are already in the end of this week. So we are going to wait a little longer for the others because we are going to end this week number three today. So we are going to um, wait uh, like a minute and then we are going to begin with the topic that we are going to develop this day. And also we are going to end with the present tense today. So we are going to wait a little bit because I know that um, today is Friday and it is not like we have the, the sessions on this day, but you know that we have like some changes in the schedule for this week. Okay, I think that we are going to start and then uh, maybe some of them will come to the meeting uh, later, but that's okay. So yesterday we were talking about the present perfect and now we are going to continue with that part. Then we are going to see the other uh, tenses that we have in present and we are going to end that topic today. The next week we are going to have another topics that we are going to develop in the last four days. Remember that um, the next week is the last week of this course. So just we are just going to have four days um, to complete all the information and all the topics that we have for this uh, module. Maybe this week feels like a very, very long week because we have five days. But finally, we are in the last day today, so we are going to uh, end this week um, on an unusual uh, day because we didn't work on Friday, but we are going to do it today and we are going to end this session. So we are going to uh, continue with the topic or the, the, um, the information that we have for the present perfect. And maybe you can feel like this time is going to end very, very fast. So we are going to begin right now and we are going to continue with the information that we have for this uh, topic. So it is supposed that I, have, I am going to have like a very good connection today. So I'm going to work in the document in Google Doc. So it is going to be easier for us to find the information already. So we are going to begin with this. We were talking about this structure yesterday and it is the present perfect. The first thing that we have here is the form that we are going to use to create sentences and is has have plus the past participle, and we have some examples. We have example number one in this one, it says, you have seen that movie many times. Then we have a negative sentence, you have seen, I mean, we have a question, have you seen that movie many times? And then we have the negative sentence. You have not seen that movie many times. So that is the base that we are going to use for this structure or for these tense. So we are going to see what are the uses that we can give to these tense. 
So we are going to begin with the number one, that is on a specified time before now. That is the use number one that we're going to explore today. And we're going to see some examples about this, um, this use number one. And also we're going to have like information about that, um, their tense. So we're going to start writing the specific information about the use number one. And then we are going to have some examples of this um, distance. So for this uh, tense, we have like a specific uh, information. And so in this case, we're going to read that information and we're going to explain what this um, general information said. So in this case, it's talking about the unspecified time before now. So we have like the um, a specific word that it's saying that we're not going to use a specific time um, of the actions or in, in which moment or when moment this action took place. So it says that we use the past perfect to say that an action happened at an unspecified time before now. The exact time is not important. You cannot use the present perfect with a specific time expression such as Yesterday, one year ago, last week, when I was a child, when I live in Japan, at that moment, that day, one day, etc. Remember that we have uh, these um, time expressions that help us to give the people that we are talking to more details about the uh, time in which we perform an action. So in that case, when we are talking about an specified time um, or an specified actions, we are not talking about uh, the time. We are not telling the people that it was an specific time in the past or in the present or maybe in the future. 
In this case, we are talking about a situation, but we are not specifying the time in which this action happened. So we are not going to use time expressions with the past perfect. I mean, the present perfect, and I don't know why I am writing past perfect here. In the present perfect, we are not going to use this uh, time expression. You cannot use time expressions with uh, this um, with this tense. So in this case, you are not going to use them for because in that case you are going to have another tense. So in this case, you need to be very very um, focused on that part because if you are going to use time expression, you need to change the structure that that you are going to use to express that ideas that you have. Así que si vamos a utilizar el presente perfecto, no tenemos que utilizar lo, las expresiones de tiempo, porque como lo dice el uso número uno, estamos hablando de tiempos eh, que no se especifican. Así que en ese caso, cuando estemos utilizando la estructura, no vamos a especificar el tiempo porque no es necesario. And we, ha we have that a phrase in which it says that the time it is not important because we are just talking about the action but not the time. And then it says that we can use the present perfect with an specified expression such as ever, never, once, many times, several times, before, so far, already, and yet because they don't have like a specific date or a specific a hour. So in that case, we are not going to know in which time we uh, perform that action. So we have expression that we can use and we have expressions that we cannot use with this tense. So I'm going to mark the, the, the expressions that we are not going to use with a, a red color. And I'm going to mark the expression that we can use with a green color, just to mark the expressions that we can use and the expression that we cannot use with this uh, tense. It is just to make it easier to find when we are like, searching for that specific, specific information on these general uh, ideas about the use number one of the uh, distance. So we are going to have it like this because in this case, we are just saying that um, the ones that are in red it are not like, um, we are not going to use them. So it's just to, to know. So we are going to continue with this and we have some examples in this case of this use number one. So we are going to see the examples.
Okay, we have the first example. And in this case, it's saying that I have seen that movie 20 times. And in this case, I am not telling you uh, when. I am just telling you that I have seen that movie 20 times. Maybe it could be like, if this one is a very old uh, movie, I can say that I began um, watching this movie when I was a child. But in this case, I am just telling you that I uh, have seen this movie a lot, but I am not telling you that I have seen that movie yesterday or I have seen that movie uh, two weeks ago or something like that. So in this case, I am just talking about the times, 20 times during my life or in the last five years or something like that. But I am not specifying the time. I am just telling you eh, another thing about the movie. Así que ahí podemos ver el ejemplo donde estamos diciendo que la vimos 20 veces, pero no estamos diciendo cuándo. En ese caso sí tenemos que ser cuidadosos de no decir una fecha exacta de cuándo hicimos las cosas, porque no funciona de esa manera con este, eh, con este tense. So in that case, we are not using a time expression. We are using another kind of expressions in which we are talking about a uh, the the number of, uh, of times in which we have seen this movie when now we have the example number two i think i have met him once before i think i have met him once before i am not telling you when i am just telling you that i think that i have met that a uh, person once once before Now we have another one and it says there have been many earthquakes in California. We have another one and in this case, this one said people have traveled to the moon. People have traveled to the moon. Next one, people have not traveled to Mars. People have not traveled to Mars. Another one, have you read this book yet? Have you read this book yet? But in this case, it's like, have you read this book uh, yet? At the end of the examples, I'm going to mark the, the structure because in this case, we need to mark the structure to know uh, what are the words that we are using for these ten? So at the end of these examples, like we have like two, three more, I'm going to mark the structure that we are using for the present perfect. Then we have another one and this one said, nobody has ever claimed that mountain.
Then we have like a question and an answer that are the same example. So in that case, we are going to have like two separate sentences, but they are part of the same example. Has there ever been a war in the United States? And we have the answer for that question. And it says, yes, there has been a war in the United States. So now I'm going to mark the uh, structure in this case so we can see in which places they are. So in the first one, I have seen here we have this structure. Then I think I have met here. The next one, there have been People have trouble. Have not trouble. In this case, this one is negative. And this one, we're going to mark the two because they are separated by the uh, pronoun. Have you read? Here, has. And claim. Again, has been. And in the last one, has been. So if you can notice in some cases or in some examples, we have like a, this structure separate by some elements in between the words. So it is not like we're going just to use this structure um, together so we can uh, separate them by using some elements. In some cases, we can use the uh, subject and in other cases, we can use another words that function with this structure. So in some cases, we are going to separate them and in other cases, we are going to write um, the expression together. So in, in this case, it's not like we're going to use like, uh, or have another use for this, um, for this time, but we are going to have like, different topics, we can call it topics, because um, what is like the really use that we can give to this is a tense. And in this case, when we are talking about on a specified time, we can uh, like sound very confusing, but we need to have like full uh, topics in which we can use these expressions. So we are going to have five, topics in which we can use this specific uh, form of the uh, structure. So uh, we have like, we know that we are talking about the unspecified time, but we are going to use them uh, with the five different topics that we are going to develop right now. So we are going to see what are those topics. Tenemos cinco temas que vamos a ir desarrollando con el unspecified time que es cómo estamos utilizando nosotros esa estructura. Así que vamos a ver cuáles son esos temas en los que nosotros podemos utilizar esta forma de el, el present perfect. So, 
We are going to begin with topic number one. And this topic is experience. And it says that we can use the present perfect to describe your experience. It's like saying, I have the experience of. You can also use this tense to say that you have never had a certain experience. The present perfect is not used to describe a specific event. So in this case, we are not going to talk about um, events. In this case, we are talking about another thing. And in this part, we are going to talk about the experience that we have. In this case is like, um, maybe we have trouble, maybe we have uh, something. So in this case, it's not talking about events. It's talking about the experience that we have in a specific thing. Or if we don't have the experience, we are going to use these tense to explain that. So we are going to see how can we create sentences or how can we express that experience through the uh, present perfect. Okay, in this case, we have the um, example number one, and we are saying, I have been to France. That is the sentence. And in, this sentence means that you have had the experience of being in France. Maybe you have been there once or several times, we don't know, but you are just telling us that you have been to France, but you are not explaining all the things that you did in that place. So in that case, you are just uh, talking about an experience. Then the second one, I have been to France three times. So in this case, you can add the number of times at the end of the sentence but you are not like specifying in which uh, moment you were there. So it is valid that, that you can use numbers in, in this uh, tense. Then we have the other example and it says, I have never been to France. This one is like a negative connotation. So in this case, we are telling that in this sentence, we are trying to say that you have not had the experience of 
going to friend. So in this case, we um, had never tried that experience in that case because we are talking about the, the, the experience that we have and also the experience that we don't have in different things. Then we have another example. And this one says, I think I have seen that movie before. And in this was it, it, in this sentence, it's not like we need to, to to think a lot about the meaning of this uh, sentence because we are talking about uh, the experience of seeing that movie. So in that case, we have seen that movie, so we have experienced that um, situation. So it is not like very complicated to understand the meaning of this next example. Then we have three more examples and then we are going to see the topic number two. So we have there the examples and now we are going to see topic number two. So in this case, we are going to see this topic is about change over time. So we are going to see change over time in this topic number two. And it says that we often use the present perfect to talk about change that has, has that has happened over a period of time.
So here we have four sentences or uh, four examples. And we have the number one, you have grown since the last time I saw you. The government has become more interested in our education. Japanese has become one of the most popular courses at the university since the Asian Studies program was established. And my English has really improved since I moved to Australia. So in this case, uh, we are talking about some changes that happen over time. This is not like um, some things that change uh, from yesterday to now. So it is like a period of time in which these changes is going to happen. So topic two, change over time. So it's kind of a, a short, so we are going to see the topic number three. And after that topic, I'm going to tell, um, I mean, I'm going to ask you something. But let me finish this first, and then I will ask you a question. So in the topic number three, we are talking about accomplishments. We often use the present perfect to list the accomplishments of individual and humanity. So you cannot mention a specific time. Again, in this case, we cannot talk about a specific time, but we can use this for making this kind of list. So here we have the, uh, ex the examples of this one. And we have uh, four. So in this case, we have man has walked on the moon. Our son has learned how to read. Doctors have cured many deadly disease and scientists have split the atom. So I was telling you that I'm going to ask you a question. So I have a question for you. Um, are you okay with the uh, work on the platform or any of you has like some troubles with some exercises or something like that? And I am asking you this because um, if you are having some troubles with some exercises or uh, with some uh, thing on the platform, we can solve some of these exercises here in the session. Así que si alguno de ustedes está teniendo algún problema con algún ejercicio, eh, podemos resolverlo en la sesión. But I don't know if you are done with your um, work on the platform or you are having troubles. 
So if you have something to say about the platform and the work on the platform, you can tell me now. Or if you are okay, you can tell me that too. Tell me, Elizabeth. Good evening, Miss. Good evening. Eh, los problemas que yo tuve fueron en los ejercicios donde había un video que había que responder sobre el video, pero el video no lo reproducía. So in that case, you have not seen the video. No ha visto el video todavía, ¿verdad? No, no, no vi ningún video. Ok. Me, eh, can you please... No sé si los demás tienen el mismo problema. No sé si alguien más tuvo problemas con esa parte del video. O no han llegado a esa parte. No, te no, no Para mí es ok. Ah, ok. So, si puede buscar el ejercicio en este momento y decirme qué número es para revisarlo y ver eh, si hay algún problema también eh, en mi dispositivo o algo por el estilo, o si no, ayudarle directamente con los ejercicios para ver eh, de qué tratan y eso, ¿verdad? So you can search mm -hmm. the, the part and tell me the number of the, of the exercise. ¿Alguien más que haya tenido otro problema con algún ejercicio de la plataforma? En el 3.8, este, no me dio el video. Ok, let me go to the platform and I'm going to see if I can watch the video or something like this. So, give me a second. Solo que ahorita, bueno, es que yo ya terminé la, la, la plataforma, pedí ayuda a, al que me contactó, pero sí, este, incluso hoy en el día me metí para la última, que era la 5.3, me parece. Uh -huh. Este, no lo podía ver todavía el video. So let me see if I can, I can see it here. Because in some cases it's like, si pasa esto de que, de que se pierden a veces los... Uh, los videos o los audios. So, me dijo 3. Punto... 3. Ya le digo. 3.8. 3.8. So, let me see. 3.8. Yes. 3.8. No, I can I cannot see it. Yo tampoco lo puedo ver. También este 4.2. 4.2, let me see. Yeah, it's the same problem. I can see the, the, the file too. No sé, no, a mí tampoco me parecen los los archivos sí. uh -huh. uh, y también la última que era el 5.3 eh, que hoy también lo intenté y no, no lo pude ver así que yes in some cases this is a problem of the of the file and pero ya le ayudaron y ya terminó lo de la plataforma verdad yes ah, ok 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 so si alguien más eh... teacher el 5.3 es audio. ¿Es un audio? Yes, only audio. Mm, también video. Sí, están las dos partes. Eh, primero aparece eh, la conversación y eso, pero eh, no sé si es exactamente otro audio el que aparece, porque a mí solo me parece que no, que no está. Y luego sí aparece lo del audio. So I don't know if. It is something else. But uh, the thing is that you have uh, finished the, the work. So in that case, uh, you have like someone help you with uh, that part. So that's okay. So then I think that we are okay with that part. So we are going to continue with uh, the other um, topic that we have in this uh, tense so we are going to continue because we have like 
uh, topic four and topic five to end this part. And then we're going to see the other one because we are almost um, at the end of, the, of this uh, session. So I was telling you at the beginning that maybe we can feel like uh, we have a long, very, very long week, but today we're going to see it like, it's going to end very fast. So indeed it's going to end in a couple of minutes. So we are going to continue because we have like a couple of minutes more. Maybe 10, 13 minutes. So we are going to continue. So we have topic number four. And this one is talking about an incomplete action you are expecting. So, and in this one, you are like saying that an action with which we expect has not happened using the present perfect suggests that we are still waiting for the action to happen. In this case, it's something that is not finished. So we are expecting that in some time, this action will happen. So in that case, we are going to use this tense for that kind of actions. And we have the examples. And we have James has not finished his homework yet. Then Susan hasn't mastered Japanese, but she can communicate. Deal has still not arrived and the brain hasn't stopped. So for the last topic, uh, we have multiple actions at different times. In this case, we also use the present perfect to talk about several different actions which have occurred in the past at different times. Present perfect suggests the process is not complete and more actions are possible. Again, we are talking about um, unfinished actions. So we are like expecting that it happens in some time in the present, but in this case it's are like action that has not finished in the past. And for this one, we have some examples. In this case we have, the army has attacked that city five times. I have had four quizzes and five tests so far this semester. We have had many major problems while working on this project. And she has talked to several specialists about her problem, but nobody knows why she is sick.
Okay, so in that case, we uh, have finished the uh, present uh, perfect. In this case, we have five topics in which we are going to use this structure. And you know that we have the number one that is the experience. We are going to talk about the experience that we have. Also, we are going to use this structure for change over time in some situations. Then accomplishments, number four, an incomplete action you are expecting. And in the number five, uh, multiple actions at different time. So in this case, we are going to end with the present continuous. We are just going to have like the structure and some general ideas about this topic because we have like like six minutes to end this uh, session. So I'm just going to write the uh, name of the tense and the structure and the uses, but just a general um, way because we are almost, almost done. So for this tense, we know that uh, we are going to use verbs with ing form. So for that reason, we call it a continuous. So in that case, we are going to have like a very simple uh, structure. And in this case, you're going to use the, um, the subject, then uh, the verb to be in this case, depending on the subject that you are using, then the verb with uh, the ing form and the complement for this um, kind of sentence. And we have the examples in positive uh, sentence. We have, you are watching TV. Four questions, are you watching TV? And for negative one, you are not watching TV. So in that case, we have very simple uh, statements. And for these um, tense, we use the, or we have the uses, First, we are going to use this structure for noun. In this case, we are talking about this time. Uh, so we're going to use it for uh, expressing the idea that something is happening now at this very moment. Then we have the use number two, that is longer action in progress now. Now can mean this second, today, this month, this year, this century and so on. So in this case, when we are talking about now, we have like uh, different expressions that we can uh, use for that now. And we can use the present continuous to say that we are in the process of doing a longer action, which is in progress. However, we might not be doing at this exact second. Then the use number three for this one is the near future. Sometimes the speaker use the present continuous to indicate that something will or will not happen in the near future. Use number four, repetition and irritation with always. And that is the last one of these, um, um, these uses that we can give for the, um, for this tense. So in the last one, we can say the present continuous with words such as 
always or constantly express the idea that something irritating or shocking often happens. And in this case, we can have like a negative emotion for this kind of, um, for this kind of sentences. So in that case, we have for this one, just for uses. And for the others, we have like uh, different uses, but in this case, we have four different uses. And the last one of these present uh, tenses are the, uh, the present perfect continuous. That is like um, a combination of the present perfect and the present uh, continuous. So in that case, we have the form of has or have been plus the verb with ing. So in that case, we're just going to have the verb with ing with the have or has been. It's like a combination of those um, tenses. And also this one has two different uses. The number one is the duration from the past until now and recently or lately. So in this case, we have just four, I mean, just two uses for this present tense. But we are going to end this session here because it's time to end it. And we are going to see each other on Monday on the last week of this course. So have a really good night and see you on Monday. Thank you, teacher. Thank you, teacher. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.